Hey everyone, um, I'm Dawn Gage. I am a fourth grade teacher at McClendon Elementary and today I'm going to talk to you about doing some differentiation in Canvas with your students um, who are 504 RTI, SPED, um, and how to add assignments and be able to differentiate with them in the classroom. So um, first of all, there are several options that you can use on here. So in Canvas, I've got an assignment pulled up here. And many times I have assignments that I give like this that students have to work on. Um, one of the things I do is I make two assignments. I have one that is for all my other students and one that is for my accommodated students. Now, in order to do this and be able to assign it to the correct students, I've got groups. So under settings, I went through and in sections, I created another couple of sections, a writing section here in which I took all of my other students and added them into that one section and a writing ACC for my accommodated group. And under people, you're able to go in and take each of those students, click on their name. And it does is a little time consuming. But as you click on their name, you add them to that group. If you don't do that, I discovered that I have kids that get multiple assignments um, and they get two of the same assignments. So once I did this, that kind of solved all my problems. Um, so I did make sure that I had these two different groups so that I could separately assign um, to the accommodated group. And you can change that under people. You click on each student's name, you add them to whichever group you need them to be in. Um, and then they're there whenever you need to assign it. So um, basically, there's a couple of different things that you can do. So there's an extension on here called Immersive Reader. And it's in the Chrome Web Store. And if you just go in and search Immersive Reader, you can add it to your extensions. Once you've added it to the extensions, then when students go to a page that you've typed on, so let me go down here to this page, and you've got words that you've typed in there, then they can highlight those words. They can right click on them. And then you'll see down here, it says, help me read this. And so this is from Immersive Reader. And when you click on it, it opens into a new page. And then there's a little play button down here for them to play. And there's lots of different things they can do. They can change the text size. They can change um, the font and way it looks. They can change colors of the background, whatever's most comfortable for them. There's lots of different things they can do with that. Um, and then it will read what is on that portion that they have highlighted on the screen. It's really good for web pages and anything that any kind of document that you have typed. Um, the problem that I had with that, though, is when I got down here onto these, these are slides and these slides are not typed on on here because in order to keep the students, if, if I need them to manipulate anything in order to keep them from moving stuff around, this is a background image. And so as a background, it's an image and it does not allow me to highlight the words and have it read to them. So when I do use assignments and I have several that I use with slides, I had to come up with another solution. So one of the things that I did is with slides, Google now has it where you can go in and you can add audio. And so under the insert, they have an audio button and it takes the audio directly from your Google Drive and you can add it here into this. So I've already added screens. And so you'll notice when they hover over it and it gives them a play button and it allows them to play what has been read for that screen. Now, again, you've got to go in and record the audio for that so that you can add it in there. Um, there are several different things you can use for that. Uh, Vocaroo.com is a place that will let you um, make free audio recordings. And then you can download the MP3. Um, online voice recorder.com is another one that will let you do that and let you download for free. And then there's an extension up here, this little pink one called Reverb, that when I click on it, it will let me go in. And again, I can record whatever I'm saying. And then I can download and I can and I can use that. As a matter of fact, it'll even give you a um, embed code to be able to put in. So for instance, on the sentence fragment assignment that I gave to my accommodated kids, 
um, down here, it was, I used reverb in order to read everything that was on the screen for them. And so I was able to embed it, embed it up here and they just clicked on the play button and then it played everything that was down here on the page and it played it back for them. So that's another option. The thing that I have with Reverb or with Vocaroo or online voice recorder is it takes up part of my screen or it takes up all of my screen. And if I am going in and I am recording something, I need to read it off of my screen. So unless I split the screen, then I'm going to have a hard time being able to see it um, to be able to record it, or I'll have to print it out to be able to do a voiceover for it. So basically what I usually do is I do what I'm doing right now using Screencastify because with Screencastify after I record, then I can go over here and I can export audio only and it will save it directly into my Google Drive. So when I go over to my drive, there's actually a Screencastify that um, folder out there and it saves all of my audio when I export it into here. And so I make sure I name it. So when I have different pages, I name them pages one, two, three, and four, so that I know which one that I'm doing. And then when I go in and I add it, I simply go through and I say, insert audio, and then I pick it from my drive. And once I've selected it, then it puts a little button up in the top corner. And over here in the side, you can change the size, you can change the rotation of it, position, you can even recolor the buttons so that they can be another color. Um, you can change your position to be in the top left or in the center or someplace like that. So there's lots of different things, or you can actually manipulate it yourself and put it wherever you want it to go. So that is something that I've used frequently. Um, and my students know to go and use that and to click on the button and to tell it to play when they get ready to use and do that assignment. So this one is already done as well as the assignment that they will complete okay, in which they will go through, click. And I tell them in the instructions to make sure that after each set of questions, they pause the sound, they go in and do the assignment, they press play again, and then it will go to the next one. So that way they kind of get trained on doing that whenever they do their assignments and they're not listening to the whole thing over and over again. Um, so those are some options that I go through and use. When I get ready to assign it then, um, under my modules, again, I said I make two assignments on here. So this one is the regular assignment. And this is my accommodated assignment. And again, when you get ready to assign this. And this is not the correct. Let me edit. And I've got the incorrect one in here. So I'm going to go get rid of that. Okay. I use... The more external tools to embed it up there and I just select my file and I select the one that I created that has the sound for this group and add and once I attach it I'm gonna go change the height because that's I don't need that much black space Ah, that didn't do quite what I wanted it to do. I got the wrong one. There. Um, you'll see that the sound is at the top of each of those slides. And all they have to do is click play and it will play each of those for them. Um, and then, of course, with my assignments down here, I will go in and create an external tool, go out and again, use the Google Assignments LTI and go and find the one that I have created to attach with the sound on it, which would be right down 
here. And then I will attach it. And so the attachment will have the sound to go along with it. And again, when I get ready to assign it right here, I just find the one that I named here that has the students that I need on it. I set all my times and everything and I click save and publish. Um, it will go in and tell you that you're not assigning it to these groups. You just hit continue. And then your assignment is ready for your students. So um, hopefully this is kind of help you um, go through. Yes, you'll have a couple of different a couple of different assignments um, for your students under modules. But again, when you rename it, okay, it should be easy to keep track of. Um, in your grade book, you'll have one set of assignments for students on one side with this and one set with the other students beside it. Again, it's easy to read and easy to see. Um, but hopefully um, you kind of got just a little bit out of this and um, give it a try. See if it works for you. Um, and if you need any help with it, uh, shoot me an email and let me know and I'll do what I can. Thanks.